Hey folks, I'm Shay. I'm a solution, solutions engineer here at Closed Loop AI. We are healthcare's data science platform. We help healthcare organizations improve outcomes and reduce costs with accurate and also explainable, actionable predictions of individual level health risks. Our customers' data will, um, or our customers will include organizations like health systems, risk taking providers and also health insurance plans. Today, I will demo a new platform capability that we've developed in collaboration with Jon Snow Labs. I'm going to show you how you can use generative AI models or, or large language models to segment high-risk patients based on their clinical data. And this tool, is um, meant to be useful for care managers and population health managers to identify prevalent and, and common patients and design targeted intervention strategies. So let's dive in. This web interface right here is the closed loop platform. I've loaded in some demo data. There's, there's about 67,000 patients. And this, pa this patient population is meant to mimic a, uh, a typical Medicare population. So we'll have in it mostly elderly individuals, individuals with chronic diseases and severe illnesses. And a common use case of the platform is risk stratifying these patients. So you may want to know, for example, who's likely to have an unplanned hospital admission in the, in the next six months. And if you knew the answer to this question, you might allocate resources to the most vulnerable, enrolling them in a, in a complex care management program, for example, if you knew who's likely for um, overutilizing the ER, you might have a, a, another care management program for that. Um, maybe for readmissions, you might want to uh, target them for, for a transitions of care program. And here's what an example list looks like. So um, we have our, our list here. These patients are sorted from the highest risk to the lowest risk. And the most organizations will, will stra stratify these lists based on traditional rules-based approaches, but those tend to fall short in terms of accuracy and, and actionability. The, the platform will use um, machine learning models to generate these lists. The data is pulled in from sources like claims or, or EHR sources. And this score right here is coming from uh, the machine learning model. On the right-hand side, we have some of the individual level risk factors that are most important in making this prediction. So for example, for this particular patient, the, the fact that they've had eight unplanned inpatient admissions in the past 12 months is contributing to this risk score. Now, the model's been trained with over 800 measures or features like this, and the platform is generating these features just from the raw and, and clinical data. Now, this list by itself is, is great at showing you individual level patterns. But what if you wanted to spot patterns across your entire patient population? The purpose of, of this new click capability is to help you identify these, these prevalent cohorts. And so, for instance, um, what you could do is if you have, uh, if, you, if you see that or discover a high prevalence of, of diabetes severity or chronic kidney disease, maybe you might offer in your care management program um, a an additional uh, item or, or resource to do things like blood glucose monitoring or um, really focus on dietary education. And so I'll, I'll let's um let's ask uh, a couple of questions about about this particular list. So starting off with something really simple, you might want to know. Um, all right, well, which patients are in the top one percent of risk um, and have one or more ER visits in the past six months. Okay, so there's 180 such patients. We have um, 
some information about those patients that we can use to look them up. Um, so here's one of the patients in the top 1% of risk. This patient uh, has also had one or more ER visits in the past six months. That data is stored in the platform. It's not necessarily visible here. In a second, we'll, we'll see behind the scenes of, of um, how the generative AI model is, is uh, surfacing this individual as, as um, having one or more ER visits. But we can, we can ask a couple more questions here. So, um, well, this is 180 patients. Maybe, maybe we, we also want the next five. Uh, so um, show me the, the next five. Um, what are what are examples of, of perhaps more interesting questions we can ask? Which patients are in, in the top one percent of risk and have chronic kidney disease? Uh, and then, and let's do one more. Um, what patients with a, a behavioral health disorder have had one or more inpatient admissions in the past year? Right. So now I'm going to show you behind the scenes of what's happening here uh, just a little bit. Behind the scenes, um, there's there's one key mechanism to, to take note of. And I have here a, a separate screen that, that shows uh, a little bit of how the, 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 um, the large language model is, is generating these results. When, it, when a user asks the chat interface a question, so we just asked it, which, which patients are in the top 1% and have had one or more ER visits. There, there's a large language model that's trained by John Snow Labs um, that has been trained by John Snow Labs and it's converting that question, which is a natural text here, into a, a SQL query. Um, so this is an example of how the model has decided to encode that uh, as, as a SQL query. Now the SQL query is run against the platform uh, and the result is now going to be a list of patients with the characteristics having a percentile in the 99th percent or higher and then also having one or more ER visits in the past six months. Um, and because of this large language model now, Clinical experts and population health experts no longer need to write code or queries to be able to surface these insights themselves. Uh, now, th there's a little bit more that's that's happening here, and I'll just touch on that briefly. Th this is the, the question that one might ask, and this left-hand cell shows what the model um, is prompted with or what the large language model is actually working with. So you can see the question is down here at the bottom, but in addition to that question, there's a little bit more work that needs to be done in feeding the model relevant information that it can use to generate this query. And so in addition to feeding in the question, we're also passing in uh, a list of relevant table columns. So we, we know that the machine learning model has been trained on 800 or, or so features. And these are some of the columns that are most relevant in for answering this question. Uh, so you um, certainly if you're asking about ER visits, there's going to be some table columns or some measures that you will need to know that relate to ER visits. And you'll see that there's plenty of columns here um, that, that are being passed into the model. The, the question now is, 
how do you actually know which columns to pass in? And even before that, you might want to know the answer to, well, why can't we just pass in all of the columns? And one big reason for that is, as we know, large language models have a limited context window. Um, when you're dealing with a large amount of information, especially in, in the hundreds of, of features and measures, th you, you must limit the information that's passed in. And so th there's a, a little bit of intelligent behind the work, additional work that's being done to limit the, the, the use of relevant information. Uh, just touching on how that's done a little bit, that's also being done using generative AI. Um, and in particular, uh, the way that it's being done is is using a mechanism called um, semantic context encoding. Uh, and, and you can see that a little bit right here. So there's 982 different columns. That's what the model's been trained with. Here's an example of some of those columns. So you have information about acute organ failure, age, medical transport, um, unplanned admissions, all sorts of information about that patient's diagnosis histories, procedure histories. Um, and out of these 982, can't pass in every single one for, for every single question. And so you have to limit what information is being passed in. That's also uh, part of and wrapped into the capability that John Snow Labs was, was, was able to provide us with. And that um, touches a little bit uh, on what's happening with that widget in this first screen right here. So the, I think um, th this is uh, the start of what we've been able to develop. And I, we're really excited on, on where we think we can take this um, in, in ways in which we can enable clinical experts and population health managers to extract more insights from, from their data um, and to be able to generate and take actionable uh, intervention strategies for their patients on a wide variety of, of different outcomes. Um, please feel free to reach out uh, if you want to learn a little bit more about this capability or, or certainly reach out to Johnson Labs and thank you for your time.